Hi guys, and welcome to the video for adding and subtracting rational expressions with unlike denominators. So in this section, we're going to be adding and subtracting rational expressions that may not have a common denominator. So I'm going to teach you how to actually make the common denominator um, in this situation. And then this is an essential skill for pre-calc. Um, that's why we're doing this. And um, the reality is you're going to know you can do this when you can find that the least common multiple of two non-common bases and then add those resulting res uh, rational expressions. So um, here, let's get started. Um, so the prerequisite skill for this section is you need to know what a least common multiple is. And I know that we did that before in unit three and we did it, um, I think I mentioned it a couple other times in some other sections, but we need to make sure that we, I'm just reviewing it because we need to have this skill. Um, remember that it's the smallest number that two numbers can multiply both to be. So example, like three and four can both multiply by something to be 12. Um, and then they can also multiply to be 24, but 12 is smaller, so it's the least common multiple. So we're gonna use this concept a lot this section. Um, usually the easiest way to find the least common multiple is to multiply the numbers by each other. But when you have cases like two and four, Four is the least common multiple because four times one is four and two times two is four. So it varies from um, case to case, but usually you can just multiply the two numbers or two expressions together to make the least common multiple. So the steps for adding and subtracting, um, they're very similar to the other ones. Um, they're just, I've got more information in them. Uh, make sure that you all the expressions have common denominators before you do. Um, if you do, if they do not, you have to force them to have a common denominator by multiplying um, the top and the bottom by an equivalent fraction. So when I say this, okay, guys, what I am trying to say is if I'm going to multiply the top of an expression or the bottom of an expression by x, I need to multiply the top and the bottom by the same amount because this expression is equal to 1, okay? Um, when we multiply by 1, so... Uh, when we multiply by 1, we do not change the value of the expression. So when we multiply by 1, we do not change the value of the expression. So we are not um, breaking the rules of math that say what you do to one side, you have to do to the other. Um, multiplying by an expression that is equivalent to 1 doesn't change the value. It simply rewrites it. It makes it easier to use. Um, then what you do is when you have your common denominators, you're going to add the expressions by your combining your like terms on the top. Um, don't change the denominators. And then you're going to reduce. You're going to factor, factor, factor as much as possible. Um, and then so some people ask, um, some other students asked, um, what is the good process to follow um, for factoring? Um, the first thing that you want to do is look for any GCFs. OK, um, you should be hunting for greatest common factors as much as possible, um, especially in the binomial expressions. Um, and you can tell. Um, if you have something like 2x minus 6, uh, the, two, the 2 in front of the x um, really gives away that you're going to need to factor a GCF out. But if you have an expression like x plus 3 um, and you don't have, like you're missing something in front of this, like oh, I want to put it like here, like you're missing a, a coefficient in front of x, you can tell that you're probably not going to need to factor that. So yes versus no. Um, if you have any quadratic trinomials, you know, the uh, x squared um, plus 6x plus 4 or something, um, you're going to want to try to factor that using the, uh, the star, the x factor. Um, if those fail, really, we're not going to be able to cancel anything, um, but just try to reduce any coefficients if possible, if possible. Um, and then you need to make sure that you have the same number of terms to cancel. So you need something like a single term, like 6x for a monomial, um, x plus 2 for a binomial, and a trinomial. I already showed you x squared plus 6x plus 4, so you can refer to that. Um, and then no canceling parts, okay? I've seen some people do this, and it needs to stop. Um, you can't do this. You can't um, cancel the v and the 5s here to create v over 1. Okay, because these are not the same. Um, you, they have to be the exact same expression. I can't cancel a V here and cancel a V down here and then the fives. You can't do that. It has to be the exact same expression on the top if I actually want to cancel it. So um, let's get into uh, 
um, some examples. I've got a bunch of examples here and hopefully they give you a variety of different problems um, so that you can get a handle on this type of problem. Um, so simplify the following rational expression. So I have 7 over 2r minus 11 over 2r squared. Um, I'm going to look at the denominators and yes, they are different. So I'm going to think to myself, okay, um, I have to actually think to myself, um, what could I multiply one or both denominators by in order to reach the LCM? And then I have to think to myself also, what is the least common multiple here? Um, the question, the, the answer of what is the least common multiple, um, I believe that there is a way to make 2r and 2r squared. You could multiply something by 2r to make 2r squared. So the least common multiple would be 2r squared here. There is something that I could multiply 2r by to make 2r squared. What could I multiply one or both denominators by in order to reach the LCM? Uh, I could multiply the left one by r. So if I multiply the left expression by r, I could, in fact, um, make these equivalent expression or common denominators in order to add or to subtract them, excuse me. So I'm going to multiply the top by r and the bottom by r. Again, this expression over here is equivalent to 1, okay? I don't like how it's sideways. Um, it is equivalent to 1. It's like saying 1 over 1 if you canceled it. And it's totally fine to multiply expressions by 1. It doesn't change their value. It just rewrites them. Um, so on the top, I now have 7r. And on the bottom, I'm going to have 2r squared. And then minus 11 over 2r squared. So then I have no like terms to actually combine um, because these are um, completely... On, these are not, 7r and 11 are not like terms in any way, shape, or form. So my uh, top would be 7r minus 11 over 2r squared. Um, and then, so I'm going to run through my ideas of factoring. This is a binomial, um, but 7 and 11 don't have anything in common, and there's only one r on the top. So that means that there's nothing to factor there, so there's nothing to cancel. So that is my final answer. 7r minus 11 divided by 2r squared. Okay, so um, another example of simplifying, um, like the, we have like two monomials. We have a monomial over a monomial plus a monomial over a monomial. Um, again, I need to think to myself, what is the LCM? So I need to think to myself here, um, what is the LCM? And then how do I create it? So the LCM, um, if I examine, I see 4x and 16x squared. If I multiplied 4 by 16, um, I, or 4 by 4, I could make 16. So the LCM has a 16 involved. And if I multiply x by x, I could... Um, make x squared. So the LCM is in fact 16x squared. And what would I need to multiply by on the right fraction in order to make it? Well, I would need 4x um, over 4x. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We are going to multiply the top. So times, and actually I don't need the, uh, I don't need the parentheses, uh, times 4x over 4x. So if I multiply the top of the expression on the right, um, of course I'm going to rewrite the, the left fraction, the left expression, 8x squared over 16x squared, or not x squared on the top, just 8x, uh, plus, um, I'm going to multiply these out, I'm going to get 4x squared on the top, and then I'm going to get 16x squared on the bottom. So now what I am going to do is uh, add these expressions together. So um, all I do is combine like terms on the top, if possible. Um, I cannot. Uh, 8x and 4x squared do not have um, anything in common. 
So 4x squared plus 8x divided by 16x squared. So now I'm going to examine the top. The top expression has um, uh, both, both 4x squared and 8x have a 4 in common, and they also have uh, x in common. So I can GCF uh, 4x out of the top. So I get 4x times, and then it would be x plus 2. And on the bottom, I still have a 16x squared. Uh, so now what I can do is I can reduce, I can reduce the 4x and 16. So 4 and 16, um, I'm actually going to use a red pen for the reduction here. Uh, 4 and 16 could be reduced to 1 and 4. And then I could cancel an x with one of the x's from the bottom. So I am left with, on the top, I meant to switch it back to black. I am left with x plus 2 divided by x. And you cannot cancel anything else because even though there's an x in both expressions, um, the top is a binomial, the bottom is a monomial, so they're not they're not matched up. They cannot be canceled. So x plus 2 over x is our final answer. Okay, simplify the following rational expressions again. So uh, this time I notice that it is subtraction, and I think I look at the bottoms here and I see, huh, okay, one of them is x minus 4, the other is 5x minus 4. Um, what could I multiply? any of them by to make a least common multiple here. Um, if I multiply this one by 5, um, I would get 5x minus 20. Hmm, that's not going to work. Um, if I multiply, I can't do anything to this one. So I think I need to uh, uh, use the play, the um, idea of multiplying each expression by the other's denominator. So here's how this is going to work. Okay, um, on the top of this fraction, on the left, we are going to multiply by 5x minus 4. It's the opposite, it's the opposite fraction's denominator. And then, remember, it's 5x minus 4 over 5x minus 4. And then on the right one, we're going to multiply by the left denominator. So x minus 4 over x minus 4. So then what we're going to do is we are going to, um, we're not actually going to multiply anything on the denominator. Um, our new expressions are going to look like this. You're going to distribute to the top and you get uh, 20x minus 16. And then on the bottom, you're going to have the expression 5 x minus 4 times x minus 4. You're not going to foil it out. You're not going to um, multiply them. You're just going to write them as being multiplied by each other. Um, that is sufficient enough to create a common denominator. Because look, uh, the other common denominator, the other denominator would also be 5x minus 4 um, times x minus 4. And then on the top, I would have uh, the 3 multiplied by 3 by x in negative 4. I would have 3x minus 12. So then what I am going to do is just combine the tops. Oh, it's not a multiply symbol. It is a time, uh, plus symbol, or minus symbol here. So on the top, I get 20x minus 3x is 17x. Uh, negative 16, take away negative 12. So it's negative 16 plus 12, which would be negative 4. And then I have the expression um, on the bottom, 5x minus 4 times x minus 4. And I'm a little bit lazy, and I'm just going to copy-paste it. Um, so that is what we get. Um, we look at the top, 17 and 4 do not have any factors in common. Um, 17 is a prime number, 
And then on the bottom, there's nothing really to cancel. So this is my completed expression. There's nothing left to cancel. OK. So again, simplify, um, another, another addition. And both of the denominators are binomials. And while we can see that they are very close, like x minus 1 and x plus 1 are still not the same, so we still can't add them. So I need to multiply the, the left one by the right denominator. That's the easiest method to make a least common multiple here over x plus 1. And I will, I'm going to multiply this one here times x minus 1 over x minus 1. So now I'm going to distribute on the top. And I'm going to distribute on the top because it's easy to do. Um, I'm not going to multiply FOIL on the bottom because that's just going to, I'm going to have to refactor that. So what's the point of refactoring when, or multiplying when I have to go back and factor it? So the bottom of the fraction on the, the left becomes um, x plus 1 times x minus 1. And not plus, I keep, I, I multiply and I keep adding, I put a multiplication in the row by accident. Um, and the other one is x plus 1 again times x minus 1. So now the denominators are the same. You can see that they're the exact same expression on the bottom. The top becomes 2x plus 2 when I distribute, and the other one becomes 2x minus 2. Uh, so then we just add the tops. So we're just going to add the numerators. 2x and 2x is 4x. Uh, 2 plus negative 2 is 0, so it's just 4x over the expression um, x plus 1 times x minus 1. And um, I can't factor anything out of x plus 1 or x minus 1, and 4x can't be factored because it's a monomial, so this is our completed answer. Okay, um, another one where it has a binomial on the bottom. So um, we're kind of getting, we're kind of seeing the pattern here with the binomials on the bottom. Um, we need to multiply by the other's denominator in order to complete this, or in order to make them um, have the same denominator. So times a minus 5 on the top over a minus 5. And on the right, uh, times a minus 4 over a minus 4. So then what we're going to do is we're going to distribute um, on the top, but on the bottom, we're going to keep our expressions the same. Um, each expression on the bottom will be a minus 5 times a minus 4. And so um, I'm going to copy paste because I'm a little bit lazy. Also, it's going to save time. Plus, let me have the fraction bars. On the top, I'm going to have 3a squared minus 15a. And on the bottom, I'm going to have 4, or on the other one, I'm going to have 4a squared minus 16a. So now we're going to go ahead and add those together. Um, 3a squared plus 4a squared is 7a squared. Um, negative 15a plus 16a, or plus negative 16a, um, would be like adding a negative. So we're subtracting, so it would be minus 31a over, and then on the bottom here, I'm going to copy paste again, it's still a minus 5 times a minus 4. Um, on the top, um, I could factor out an a, so I'm going to do that. So I get a times 7a minus 31. And then the bottom is, again, still the same. And there's just nothing to cancel. But remember, we want to factor as much as possible because reduce, 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 factor, factor, factor to make it clean as simple as possible. So there is our completed answer. So there isn't actually a ton of like cancellation going on here. Uh, more of the skill is um, 
multiplying and then adding the rational expressions together. But do remember that it can happen. You can actually cancel stuff sometimes. It, um, so don't think that it won't happen, but it's just it just hasn't happened in the examples yet. So then we come to this odd expression here where we have 6. The number 6 plus 6 over 3x squared plus 14 minus 24. And we think to ourselves, how am I supposed to do this? One of them is a number. The other is a ridiculous expression. Um, the good news is um, this is totally doable, and it's actually not so bad work-wise as you would think. What we're going to do is we're going to take the 6 on the left, and we're going to put it over 1. And um, that makes it a fraction where we can make a common denominator. Well, what would be the easiest way to make 3x squared plus 14x? There should be an x here. Excuse me. 14x minus 24. Uh, well, really easily, we're just going to multiply the bottom by 3x squared plus 14x minus 24 and the top. So we're going to have 3x squared plus 14x minus 24. And that is multiplied by 6 over 1. And we are adding the other expression, 6 over um, 3x squared plus 14x plus 24, or minus 24 again. So um, lots of room for us to... Um, practice and multiplying factoring skills here. Um, yeah, the six in the middle, it bugs me. So um, on the left side, um, over here, we're going to multiply six to everything. Um, so we get uh, 18x squared um, plus um, six times 14 is 84. So 84x minus 24 times 6, so 24 times 6 is 144, plus 6. And then the denominators of both fractions are still the 3x squared plus 14x minus 24, so I'm just going to copy paste it and trace it down a couple times. So then it just becomes uh, us adding the denominators, or the numerators, excuse me, to get 18 x squared plus 84x minus, so negative 144 plus 6 is 138 over the same denominator. And so what we can do now is look for factors of the top. Um, um, we would need to look for a GCF. The best GCF that we could probably get out of here is a um, two at this point. Yep, if we can get a two, we could get a two out. Um, so the number on the top would be two. And three x squared plus 14 x minus 24. Um, three goes into 24, but 14 um, does not have anything in common. And um, if I multiply 3 by negative 24, I'm going to get um, negative 72. And there are no factors of negative 72 that will create uh, 14 in the middle. So I know that it's not factorable. And I know the same thing about the top. 18 times negative 138 is a very large number, and there are no factors that are going to create positive 84. Um, so really, the only kind of factoring that I can do is take a 2 out of the top, and get 9x squared plus 42x uh, minus 69 over the denominator, which still remains the same. And there, ladies and gentlemen, is our final answer. Okay, guys, so that's it for this video. It's a little bit of a long one, um, but there's a lot of skills to go over here. Um, we reviewed the idea of a least common multiple. Um, we went over the refined 
process for adding any rational expressions together, uh, not just ones that are like each other on the bottom to start. And then um, we practiced a variety of rational expression addition and subtraction problems that you may see in practice work. So that's it for the video, guys. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.